Another little update. I have not done the timing yet. Um, I'm gonna wait at least till tomorrow, get some more information, all that good stuff. But I would did want to update you on the cam sensors. Um, I believe that this is how they go in the sense that I know this side is correct. Um, I believe and all this should be fine. I just don't remember. I believe that these sensors are pointed down and not up. Um, mainly because I don't think it fit the other way around. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm like 90% sure that's right. I know for a fact that side is right. But anyway, um, so you have two, two seals on each camshaft. You have a yellow ring um, and you have a, sorry, not camshaft, but you know, sprocket reader thing. Uh, you have a yellow ring and you have a black O-ring. Um, I believe it is black O-ring farthest down and then the yellow ring um, is all the way up you'll understand once you pull one off um, yeah you don't have to pull it off change the valve cover and obviously don't worry about it you also have this main seal here um, so yeah the uh, goes this way if you see that spring or whatever around that's the opposite way flip it around um, yeah, I don't think there is anything else in there. As for these two wonderful piece of shit things, what a pain in the ass. Um, maybe, specifically this. I don't know what this is. If it's a reader for the oil, but either way it has to be swapped over. I still need to do the oil filter um, thingy whatever it's called and fitting maybe I don't know um, the official name um, it is this right here uh, I don't have a socket big enough for this oddly enough I really thought I did but apparently I have the size right under it it is a I believe a 24 don't quote me. I know it's definitely not a 22 because that's the shit that didn't work. So um, I'm obviously not gonna take a adjustable wrench and just start smacking it like I did the other. <laughs> I did that with um, this little thing and it is still not all the way down as you can see. Well, maybe you can see. Uh, it still has a small little ways to go. I'm just, I'm gonna, I think that is another 24. Why is this just not auto focusing anymore? Uh, I, I went ahead and used an adjustable wrench and smacked it around a bit and now it's starting to kind of strip the sides and I don't want that to happen obviously. So I'm gonna go pick up a 24 millimeter socket. I might start putting the accessories on the block. I don't know. And just kind of procrastinate with the timing. <laughs> uh, man, um, I really want to make sure I do get that right though. So yeah. That's why I'm a little uh, weary about it, but we are gonna figure it out at some point. Um, if I do it myself, I will let you know and then go ahead and bring you along for the ride as well. If I don't, then I'm just gonna be honest about it uh, and tell you uh, I pride myself in the sense that everything I've done to my car, I've done myself um, without any help. So I would like to continue that trend, but to be honest, I. At least with the timing, I don't know if I will. I'd rather be safe than sorry. What's going on, people? This is a completely different day. Uh, I think it's even a completely different week. I'm not entirely sure. It's been crazy. Started a new job and everything um, with things starting to finally reopen. So having a lot less time to kind of go ahead and work on getting the engine back in. But either way, I totally wanted to create, like I said, a step-by-step -step guide. So. People in the future don't have to kind of worry about um, spending thousands of dollars uh, on engine rebuilds and stuff because I want to help people and kind of have the FA um, motors kind of develop. So I want you to learn from my mistake. I set the timing. Um, this is future Brad coming to you. Um, going ahead and showing you all of the fucking errors that I made, which actually weren't that many, but it was one pretty big one. And it all came down to this little thimble, <laughs> stupid filter bullshit. 
this little thimble looking thing if you know what a thimble is good good on you um it's just this little guy it is a little tiny tiny jesus tiny little filter uh looking like a thimble i don't know how else to describe it but that's exactly what it looks like but it is an oil filter what it is and where it is is it is on the bottom side of these of the camshafts so this is the part that faces the head um it is on the camshafts right here um shout out to a couple guys on the facebook uh group might be enthusiast i'm not sure might actually be jdl um the turbo kit group not entirely sure i just basically post everywhere so thank you uh if you guys are from over there for dealing with my shit um <laughs> but it is extremely useful and it has saved me a lot look at that freaking bug flying everywhere anyway so like i said i did set the timing and that really hurts a lot after trying to figure it out to go ahead and take it off but now that i've kind of figured it out i've also laid out a guide for you guys as well um very in-depth <laughs> um and i'll probably go over it one more time um when I go ahead and set it and actually show you guys step by step. So I guess this is kind of a, a blessing. Um, nah, it's a curse. Let's keep it on. <laughs> Let's be real, you know? Um, <laughs> it's a pain in the ass because look at all this RTV I'm now gonna have to get off. These were clean heads. And now I gotta go ahead and get all of this crap off um, with a Scotch Bright pad. And when I say that, I'm using a sponge. Um, <laughs> just do it right the first time go ahead and have you not miss a step and then have to do this just like i'm doing because i give iag credit and anyone that builds engines credit because um i thought this was going to be a very straightforward process and it is kind of but again it's my first time doing an engine rebuild so there are some learning curves and stuff and setbacks it's taking a bit longer than i thought or hoped and wanted it to but you know it is what it is so that's fine old thing oh while i'm talking about the valve cover these i know i said these were correct when i had them facing this way down kind of like the opposite side that was not correct those are to the plugs do face downwards as you can kind of see they do face you should be looking at it more like that i guess you know you have the oil filter up there so on that side the plug should face down on this side they should face up why i don't know i guess less wire <laughs> back to this i'm gonna go you know switch out the stupid ass thimble filters i don't know what they're officially called um if you're curious about the part number here it is here's the new ones uh that's the full number 14451aa050 and that is specifically designed to ruin your life. Well, I just wanted to do one quick little thing. I wanted to show you. It does go face down. Um, it is, see this little thing? It goes down like that. If you're looking at the cam shafts or whatever, RTV side up, it just goes straight in. Okay, good deal. Well, I'm going to get the engine done today if it kills me. Uh, maybe not all the way done. We're gonna get leaps and bounds farther, um, at least like intake manifold, all the coolant lines um, and fuel lines on the top of the block. But as promised, I wanted to show you an actual in-depth, step-by-step um, timing on how to do it. Hopefully, just a very straightforward guide. Um, I may also clip this part of the video out and make its own guide. Um, but basically, when you get it this far, all right, um, you, you can do this without a camshaft holder. I, that's how I did it. I'm not gonna lie and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It is a pain in the ass if you did not line up this guy this one the intake on the uh driver side this should not move because it's under like load or whatever however this arrow should be pointing at this hole 
uh, I think they call it the eight o'clock position in the manual and stuff. And then this one's supposed to be facing at two. Um, the reason it's not up and down is because you will actually, when the chain comes, this will turn this way, this way will turn this way, and they will line up when you start setting the timing for that side. So that's why they have it at eight and two. Now, if this is, at least for the, um, if you do not have a cam holder, uh, which I, I don't, I'm not sure if you can just crank it over, you might be able to. Um, if you do not, you are going to have to take out the camshaft and manually rotate it over. It will go down. You might have to force it down a little bit with some, uh, with both a mallet as well as pulling it in with um, the bolts, but you definitely can do it because I don't have a cam holder, um, but I also torque these down with um, when the timing chain was on. So anyway, um, next step. So once you have this in an eight o'clock position, two o'clock position, the next step is your crankshaft. To set the timing on this side first, um, this dowel pin and stuff will be facing at six. Um, what you wanna do is go ahead and put on the uh, pulley as well as the synchro, which is this guy. There's only one way it can go in, so don't freak out about that. Also, you might wanna replace the O-ring. There's one an O-ring in there. Anyway, you put that on, you just put it on. You don't need the bolt. Um, and then you turn the crankshaft clockwise to make the pin go from six up to like, what, 10? I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's this, this dowel pin right here, right there, okay? At that point, you can then put the chains on, on. You then have to line up this guy with the um, that line with the pink face of the chain, as well as same thing down here, wherever it is. Yeah, right there. So basically, this is kind of hard to do one-handed. And then you put this you want to make sure you line up the pink faces of the chain onto those pins. So you have that. There, there, there. All right. So, I just blocked that. I hope I didn't, I might have. Anyway, it just hit the pin, that's fine. Uh, you might have to kind of maneuver this a little bit over the pins because this is where your thing goes. Anyway, I don't know if you want to do it now. Probably best to do after. I'm just going to try it now, see if I can do it. But then you want this little black faced um, chain to sit where this triangle-ish not this. Do you see that little groove? Let me grab a light real quick. There is a little groove. You can see that a little bit better. On the gear sprocket, and it points directly in between those two little peg links on the chain. And that's what you want. Then at that point, you are gonna want one of each. I don't think it's side specific. So if you mix them up kind of like I did, it's not a big deal. You want one of these. And do you want the other side? One of these. And um, they are flip flopped on each side. So like one side here will be here. Well, I don't know. I gotta double check to make sure this is the one. Um, I think it actually, this one goes on top. 
I gotta double check, but basically what I'm saying is whatever side this is on, whether it's on the top or whatever, it would be on the bottom here. So if it's on the top here, it's on the bottom. Got another step. So this is kind of what I meant. Um, you know, it basically it's like this. So if the dowel pin for this, the synchronizer is facing down, um, the gear thing is actually on this side. So it makes a line. Um, so if you go ahead, you have it there and you kind of just, again, this is kind of hard to do one. Oh, please, dear God, no rain. I can hear it going. Oh, look at that bright sunny day. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Well, basically I was trying to show you as smooth as possible, but that failed. So like I said, if you remember the pin was down here, so it's now, oh, gotta get my trusty light. Bang. All right. And that made it worse. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> There you go, you can kind of see it. So like I said, um, the nice curved one goes up top. The weird ass like Lincoln log looking shit comes down over here. Um, there's two parts for those pins. There you go, you have one going in there, one going there, and the third one is for that um, hex bolt over there. Um, as for the top one, if you know how to just put the pin in that, you're set. <laughs> you can't really screw that one up too much. I mean, I guess you could put it upside down, but you got to try pretty hard to, to screw it up. Then the tensioner goes right there. I'll show you that one next. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it is side specific. I know that part. Um, I just forget which one, there's two. There's one that has a gray thing and then there's one that has a pink one. Um, I wanna say it's the pink one, but I'm not sure. And judging by the rough fitment, uh, yeah, the pink one is on the driver's side. So here's the weird part. The, uh, the other thing that nobody told me throughout all the videos on YouTube about all the shit about doing the tensioners and stuff. Not one person said they're different fucking holes. So these holes. So basically, here's what you do to get the tensioner, because I didn't see this crap either, which is you basically take a flathead screwdriver, push this. See how there's a little indent? You push it down. Then you, at the same time, as you're hulking it out, you gotta push this as far down, and it takes a couple tries. You're not gonna get it your first time. If you do, well, don't let that shit go. And I used a, I think this is the one. It's either this one or the other one. Um, I, One of them I used a very small hex, um, like this. <laughs> like one of the smallest, smallest ones, if it'll focus. One of the smallest ones. Um, the, the smaller hole on one of the tensioners, I just used a cell phone SIM card popper, which won't focus, whatever. It's essentially a paper clip. Um, if a paper clip fits, I, for some reason, did not have any, even though I'm in college. Uh, I'm not about to use a staple. Whatever works. Uh, I'm just letting you know what I use. I'm trying to give you all the information from that I've gathered from everybody's uh, stuff. All right, so I got this SIM thing in the tensioner. This is the one that is smaller, uh, the driver one, the one you do first. This is the one that's uh, smaller than the other side. Try and at least line up one of them, and maybe like start it, you know? So I would suggest maybe the top one to hold it in place and then you can kind of more accurately, oh, sorry. You can kind of more accurately like wiggle to get this one in the correct position. They are 10 millimeters as usual. 
Also, I don't know if anyone else has this obsession of like lining up your little hole with the uh, one on the impact or whatever. But for some reason, I do. Again, my golden rule, don't hulk it out very easily. Just, you know, boom. I think the torque for this is the same thing as always, like 4.7. I'll double check, pull this guy. And as you can see, it was very anticlimactic. But uh, what I like to do is just kind of give these a little bit of a squeeze. Be sure to screw that bolt down. I have not done that yet. Ah, uh, too big. Um, yeah, that one works. And that is a wonderful Pittsburgh. Uh, what is that, five? Yeah, five. All right, got that uh, little bolt screwed down. I haven't torqued it yet, so don't worry. You're on the same step as me. Um, I went ahead and put the harmonic synchronizer on as well as the pulley on. And the reason why is now we are gonna turn it um, counterclockwise. So this way, um, and that should lead us back to the original position. Uh, and then you will notice those two here, I'm gonna turn on an extra light. You can kind of see it better. I will try and do this one-handed. Otherwise, you can just kind of use your imagination, but depending on how hard it gets. See how it's, okay, Jesus Christ. The, the fuel pump is so hard. Give me, use your imagination. I hope I showed it move at least a little bit. But that goes ahead and lines it up. Again, you want to turn the crankshaft counterclockwise so it is in the original position that it came. Holy shit, do you see that? Man, I don't want to get dumped on. I don't have... <laughs> there's, there's no covering. Ugh. All right, it's a race now, people. We're going to speed this up. Basically, now you have those two arrows lined up. You definitely want to check. Make sure your pink faces are on the lines on both sides. It is great. You want to double check to make sure your... There we go. Take this off. You can see it's also lined up, which it is. So now to do the passenger side pretty much straightforward it's the same thing as this side except on this one it's actually a lot easier because it doesn't have that fuel pump you because it's already in the correct position what you want to do is you want those arrows already to line up up and down you don't need to crank anything um that's the easy side so i don't know i personally when i'm doing research i don't like watching step-by-step -step stuff i think it makes me feel a little more confident in the crap i'm doing what side is the pink lines here it is all right as you can tell it's just pretty pretty difficult to do all this one-handed uh can you get it on yeah okay so i did not put it on the gear yet this is kind of how i do it i just put it next to it and then kind of like pull it and then kind of just push it up against, and then I'm gonna hold it with my hip. But then I just kind of flick it over. See, pretty simple, nothing crazy. And then uh, the same thing down below. It's right here, you can't really see it because of the light, it's kind of affecting the camera, but it's right there. And then you just take it up and Boop, right there, and then turn it just to put a little tension on it. Um, all right, I can feel the sprinkles. Uh, and then at that point, you're gonna have to go under and make sure that your chain is on that groove. It looks like mine is one link off. Got it, okay. And then at that point, that's when you wanna put the tensioners on. So again, you don't really need to maneuver this all that much. Um, 
they are pretty free, free flowing. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these off, the two other uh, links, because it's been a little bit. Um, and then, uh, holy shit, it just started dumping. Oh no, maybe I can't do this, we'll see. Ah, I'll end the video. Just to show the dedication, uh, I'm literally working in like a two by two little space. So if you have an actual garage, I don't want to hear shit <laughs> because um, as long as you're determined, you can you can work with what you have. Does it suck? Oh, absolutely. But you know what? At least you have a space to go ahead and work because I had to rent this garage separately because my apartment when I moved uh, did not have one because they hate people. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I put the garage door down to kind of block out some of the rain. Is it over? <laughs> Are we good? I think it stopped. Dude, what a psycho storm. It was so bad. There was like, it was like the sidewalk is moving. Anyway, you didn't come here to hear me blab. But anyway, um, I got the passenger side. It's the same thing. You know, it's nothing crazy. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably put the other peg. Yeah, this guy. I forgot the little. Oh, God, where'd it go? Oh, up top. Just kidding. I forgot they're flip-flopped. Damn, I gotta switch the 10 mil back to, ugh, I have the, uh, this is what I was talking about, by the way, another hex screw or whatever you call this, um, put it in. This one is, I don't know, the second to smallest. You can use the smallest. Um, I just prefer it bigger just so it doesn't slip out or whatever, um, cause it does kind of force it switch the thing um so now went ahead and tighten this guy down uh just pull this your timing actually i think yeah it should be set it should be good um you've got timing on this side got it on that side with that little thing um you can do all four although it's a little hard to see this is not what I was kind of planning on, guys, so I apologize for that. You got that on there. And then on this side, there. And uh, you got some water, awesome. But yeah, then the bottom is, you should have both links on the same. Um, I'm not going to be a hundred percent because it's just the way it works. Like they should be a hundred percent in the line, but they're not going to be a hundred percent like behind each other. Kind of like how one goes up and one goes down up here. Um, but that should be in time. So now you should just have to, um, you should have already changed your O-rings, but, um, if you haven't, now's a good time, unless I think there's one right here that was, might be black, blocked off, or I'm wrong, I don't remember. Anyway, all right, back at it again. So, first things first, everything on here is five foot pounds. If you wanna be really specific, it's 4.7, but uh, I just did five, you know? This is, these little hex things, these are five, tensioners are five, um, or sorry, they're all 4.7, but like I said, I did five, so 4.7 for the tensioner, the other hex, that hex is 4.7, this one's 4.7. I did five, I think it's fine, so don't stress. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure these are 13.3. Um, seems light to me, but I mean, I guess it's fine, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 13.3. But normally everything, yeah, like the water pump assembly, everything is usually like, if it's not really being used like under any sort of pressure, either back and forth, whether it's vacuum or boost, um, it tends to be what I've noticed is 4.7. <laughs> so what was I doing? 
Oh, I was going to check the, the torque on the water pump because I wasn't entirely sure if I torqued it down. So um, install the water pump. You need a water pump gasket. I thought there was going to be a gasket maker or RTV or whatever. Nope. It is a actual gasket. It costs like five bucks from Subaru. So don't cheap out on that because there's nothing better than a waterfall coming out of your engine, you know? So get on your shit. Um, <laughs> uh typically they have them in stock though which is kind of nice because they do go ahead and are transferable between like the impreza the wrx sti brz uh cross trek and whatever the other one is outback so that's kind of nice i guess they all use the same water pump what was i gonna do oh rtv so basically here's my new one you can't really see sorry about that so let me grab my light you need rtv basically on every single hole Sorry, I don't don't mean like that, but like not every single one you need it because some of these are O-rings, but you need it on all the bolt holes essentially. So this really is shitty lighting. I am really sorry about that. Um, but basically for like this guy, the RTV. Here, I'll just show you over here. So this is a lot better. This is my old one. So you got one here, one there and one there and I think that's it, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's all. I'm trying to find the oil pump. Is that what this is? I don't know. Did I take it off? <laughs> yeah, is that, I'll dig through my parts in a second, but basically you start there. 